Tim, I'll turn it over to you and let you go from here. Fantastic. Um, let's see, can, can we dim a light a little, or can everybody see okay, I should say? What do, what do you guys prefer? That seems to help a little. Is that good? We're not in the total dark, but you can you know see the screen a little bit. So let's see. Well, great. Thank everyone for coming. This is really awesome. I've been wanting to do this for a long time. I get a lot of questions about the National Park Artisan Residencies that I do. And so I thought this would be a great opportunity with the Faculty Colloquium to share some of my experiences. Um, and there's also a lot of people who don't realize that the national parks have an artisan residency program at all. And when I do my meet and greets in the parks, I'm constantly having writers and poets and painters come up to me and they're like, photographers, we didn't know this existed. Well, it does. And it's a great resource for anybody who's interested in doing something a little bit different creatively. Um, and so I'm just going to kind of go through and tell you about some of my experiences starting out with I just wanted to show you all those little dots those are national park artists and residencies those aren't just national parks those are actually the residencies themselves so not all of these are active at at the same time for instance like um, a few that I've tried to to connect with were closing because they're renovating their facilities and, and and such but these were all at one point had them and I counted, just going through the map, I counted um, about 80 that, that are still active all over the country, uh, up into Alaska, uh, Hawaii, uh, down in the southern tip of Florida. There are probably, I think there's like even three or four just down there, dry tortugas, and then a, a big cypress and Everglades where I was. So... Um, I'm going to talk about the ones that I've done since 2016. I've done, um, well, I did uh, five park residencies, and then I did one in Nevada uh, that was a, um, a non-official um, artisan residency with the Park Service. Uh, it was a private institution who's lobbying to have that land turned into a national monument. So that's why I included the little Nevada tip there. That's one that I did uh, this past summer. Um, and I went into California, Joshua Tree, Death Valley, and, and took some images and made some work there as well. So five official ones, and then the sixth one is at a really great ranch that's um, about an hour outside of Las Vegas where I spent uh, two weeks this summer. That was fantastic. And hopefully they achieve their goal and they get to protect that land and uh, protect it from some of the encroaching factors that could threaten it. And they can turn that into a official national monument and national park residency as well. So these are the ones that I've done. Um, going back to that map, Arizona, California, and starting in two, 2016 was the first one I did was Petrified Forest um, in Arizona. You know what, I meant to actually start this talk with like, has anybody been to a national park before? Yeah? Most everybody has, great. Did you have a good experience there? Did you enjoy it? Mm -hmm. what's, what's a favorite that you've been to? A part, favorite park? Canyon. Oh yeah, okay. I haven't been to that one, okay. Yellowstone. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Anybody else? Fantastic, yeah, yeah. That's actually, I haven't been to that one. And, and my wife and I and my family wants to, we're thinking about doing that one next summer before the glaciers disappear forever. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, we have, um, these are the ones that I kind of did in order. And every one is a little bit different. Um, and for those of you who don't know what an artist residency is, generally it's, it's a place where you go and you live in the park. They'll provide housing for you. The National Park Service, always with budget constraints, sometimes offers a stipend, but for the most part, uh, it's very low. So what you get when you apply is you get the privilege of living in the park, often access to things that other, the general public doesn't get to see. Like I, in, at Petrified Forest, I got to be in their, their uh, paleontology archives and see stuff that's not on view to the public. And actually just even being in the park uh, after hours, like Petrified Forest closes their gates at, at night and I had the park to myself. So if I wanted to drive out, I could do that and there was nobody else there for uh, many many miles so uh, but every park's a little different some of them are more remote some of them are more rustic 
Um, and then, you know, it's always an adventure because I never know what I'm getting into. Uh, most of the places I had never been to before, I didn't go out west until 2016. So I'm an East Coast kid who grew up in Virginia. So it was, it's all been a new adventure for me. There I am at Petrified. That's the first one I'd, I've done. They give you a little fancy magnet there. You get to drive around and have people gawk at you, right? Sometimes you want to be a little more inconspicuous than you are. Um, and, and to show you some of the eccentric housing that you get as a National Park Artist in Residency, this is the place that I stayed. My building was on the left there in the foreground. And then across the street is a historic painted desert inn, which is, uh, if you've been out west and you've been towards some of the historic, there's a, a whole Fred Harvey network of, of uh, it's an architectural movement that he started. A lot of them have been demolished. Some of them still exist, and that, that's there. So that's the a visitor center at Petrified Forest. And then you had a view every day of what looked like you were on Mars. When the, the morning light hits that uh, painted desert, it looks brilliant and red, and it was just absolutely beautiful and peaceful and the clearest skies I'd ever seen. So um, when I applied to the parks, oh, sometimes I should say also, Sometimes you're by yourself, and sometimes you're, uh, if you're lucky, you've got some neighbors. And these were uh, artists who were doing an installation out in the desert. Um, and uh, they were my neighbors to the, to the right there at that house. Um, really, really nice to have company sometimes when the, the residencies can be very, very remote and you don't see people for a couple days at a time, depending on where you are. Um, so, some of the artists in residency, so when I, I participated, for those of you who don't know me, um, since 2015, I've actually become a mask maker. I make paper mache masks, and I create them from scratch, my own kind of unique designs, influenced by things from, uh, from all over. Um, and um, the National Park Service is excited to show off your work, so they will set up, um, they'll set up readings for you if you're a writer. Um, they'll uh, have art displays, art shows, and Petrified in particular had an excellent program. And it was the first one I did and probably my favorite in terms of just the way that they had it organized and had me interacting with the public all the time. So this is actually uh, Ranger Kip Wheeler. He was my contact there. And he, um, he helped me set up a booth at the uh, Route 66 festival where there was everything from uh, fantastic western food to elvis impersonators didn't figure that one out and um so they you know we i got to interact with people actually sold some work which is always nice for an artist right struggling artist and um just had a really good time interacting with people there so what i like to do is i like to have my i like to go out and have the masks that i make modeled within the landscape and that's actually the main reason i'm there because i can i can make my work at home in my studio or here at reinhardt but I love to get those fantastic otherworldly landscapes out west that we don't get here. And if I'm lucky, there's young, friendly park rangers who will model for me. <laughs> and this is a, a model who, a, a park ranger who I just thought was so wonderful. Her name was Sevilla. And she went out to an area called Blue Mesa, which is somewhat remote. And um, she modeled the, a few masks for me. Most of the time I'm, I'm modeling the masks myself because uh, the, the residencies are a bit remote. So I end up just kind of doing it with a tripod and a, and a remote control shutter. And, and that's, that's okay, but I, I really like to be able to interact with people and connect with people. And I actually gave her that mask after she modeled for me because it was such a privilege to have her do that. That's a great photograph. Oh, thank you very much, yeah. Um, we go out, you know, it's really hard to shoot out west, I found, and so I always go out in the very last light of day because um, the sun moves so quickly in a way that it doesn't here because we have those natural trees. So they call it magic hour for a reason. You've got an hour to shoot and then the sun's it's below the horizon line. And, and this was probably about an hour before the sun went down. And then I'm using, um, I'm, I'm traveling light of course, you can't carry much out in the desert. So I have a, a little bit of a light kit with me, LED lights, but they're, they're, um, they're easy to transport. So you can see I've got a little bit of light on her eyes there to help bring that out. It's another park ranger named uh, Katie who was really uh, nice and 
uh, fantastic to volunteer her time for me. These are all at Petrified Forest. Oh, and that is my son, who's now 11, who at the time was five. And uh, he, uh, he, uh, I was out there by myself, and then my family came out to meet me at the very end. They drove out to meet me, and, and I got to show them all the park. And, and then uh, my son was nice enough to model for me. And those are those famous petrified rocks that are 250 million years old that are in the background. That was a lush jungle that eroded away and revealed these petrified trees that come out of the earth and also dinosaur bones too. There's a great paleontology program that's at the park. Have so, you tried selling the photographs? What's that? Have you tried selling the photographs? I think yeah, I, I, you know, I, interestingly, I started making masks to use them as props for my photos. And, but people just wanted to buy the mask. So that shifted me, the business aspect shifted me towards that, which is okay, I don't, you know, it's yeah. fine. But yeah, I do sell them, yeah, yeah. I, I have, I have uh, those that I sell. People kind of want the mask. I think it's something different and, and unique, you know, versus a painting or, or, or drawing or whatever. So I did Lassen in uh, Northern California. That one was so remote, almost too remote for me. I got lost. <laughs> And I, I didn't realize, as an as a East Coast kid, I didn't realize that uh, GPS doesn't work out west all the time. So you got to get yourself a good set of maps. And I didn't have that. And so I was driving around up in the National Forest. No GPS, no nothing. My GPS comes back on and I hear, welcome to Oregon. And I said, oh, I think I took a wrong turn. So I pull into the gas station. I asked the kid, I said, I think I... I'm trying to, I was trying to find this park called Lava Beds National Monument. And uh, I said, I'm from out of town. He goes, yep, I can tell that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, I survived that. Last one was beautiful. Had a little cabin to work. Um, usually the cabin is the place where you do your work as well, whether you're a writer or a, an artist. And there's my little fox mask. I try to connect the art that I make in the parks to the landscape and the animals. And if there's endangered animals, I like to particularly focus on those. Um, so there's a Sierra Nevada red fox that I was working on, and a pika, and uh, all kinds of stuff. There's me modeling the, the red fox. Believe it or not, that's in July. That snow that's in the background is not photoshopped in. Uh, that's a different world up there, and it's hard to believe. But there were roads that were still closed and impassable because of snow drift. It just sits there. And I don't know why, because it wasn't that cold. I, was, I think I was wearing shorts. Um, but something within the atmosphere keeps that, keeps that snow there, and it's beautiful and, and something that's just really uh, great for photography, for sure. Although I saw some people walking out on that ice and made me real nervous. There's another one in my more spooky mask. You can tell that one's good for Halloween. Uh, that's... Uh, Lake Manzanita, which is near where I had uh, my residence that I lived. And that's actually Mount Lassen that's in the background of that photo. And that's the volcano. I think it erupted in the early, maybe around 1910 is the last time it erupted. And that's where the park gets its name. I try to pick out parks that people don't really know about that are not as frequented. So if I, if I do Grand Canyon, it would be amazing. But the, tr the amount of crowds that come through there, especially in the summer where we're not teaching, uh, is going to be tough. So um, I always donate a mask to the park, and a lot of them I'm lucky that they've put them in their visitor center. So this is uh, this is Lassen Volcanic National Park, and I, I did a, a big deer head for them, and that's actually on display in their visitor center. So if you ever get to go out there in that remote, remote park, that's you'll find my mask there. So uh, Craters of the Moon in Idaho. Anybody been to Idaho? Okay. I thought Idaho was beautiful. I had this stereotypical image in my head. I'm going to go there and it's going to be potatoes and <laughs> flat. No, it's gorgeous. Got the Sawtooth Mountains. Um, and you can tell the landscape doesn't look like what you would think. Um, it was a little bit colder there when I was there, but I had a great time there. I spent my fall break. Um, I stretched my fall break a little bit from, from Reinhardt and, and was able to spend, I think, a week and a half, maybe close to two weeks there. And uh, there's a lot of caves there. So I've got some spooky images of me with my masks in the uh, lava tube caves where 
uh, you know, a thousand years ago, the lava went under the earth and scooped all that stuff out and left us with these beautiful caves that uh, gradually the ceilings are eroding and falling through. Who thought about lava, lava tube caves in Idaho, right? But there they are. There's me again. So that's, uh, that's actually again on a, a, a gradually sloped cinder cone volcano. And um, just, you know, for a kid like me, Coming from the east, I, I did not, uh, I was not used to this. So I thought these landscapes, they just blow me away. I'm so happy when I get there. So I did a meet and greet. Uh, at, uh, usually within the contract requirement, I have to do two meet and greets, which I'm happy to do. And I uh, get to show my masks off. Kids love them, get to try them on. And uh, a lot of times I'll do a demonstration uh, for how to get them started and how to do the painting. So moving on to a very different landscape. Uh, some, some of you may have been to the Everglades in South Florida before. Um, right beside the Everglades is a big Cypress National Monument. The land is connected, it's contiguous. So it's actually part of the same land mass, but it's been divided up slightly differently by the federal government preservation. So big Cypress was great. I loved it. Um, huge, huge 12 foot alligators everywhere. Some people might not like that part of it. But I really enjoyed uh, my time there a lot. It was, uh, I was in the mood after doing a lot of out west residencies. I wanted to, to do something on our side of the country. And uh, I did that one over a spring break. Oh, there's one of those alligators right there. Boy, you don't really get the size part of it in the photos. But I was surprised how common they really were. You're driving down the street and oh, there's not just one, there's 12 of them. There's, they're everywhere. But I'm really happy that that area has been preserved, that you can imagine in South Florida, that's constant encroachment of development, constant fight back to save that land. And uh, it was a big fight to save Big Cypress. And I'm glad that they were able to do that. And of course, the Everglades as well, which is a treasure. So I'd take my camera equipment and my mask and my costumes, and I'd go out to pretty remote places in the swamps and uh, I, I got some good light, again, um, shooting it like I was talking to you. I always try to shoot at the end of the day so you can see that light coming over my shoulder. Uh, but you're also trying to race back because you don't want to be out in the swamp after it's dark. I usually hike about a mile or a mile and a half because if you just set up and you look like this and there's tourists around, they're either going to be terrified of you or they're going to swarm you. And I've had both of those things happen to me. And, uh, and, and ask you, what are you doing, you know? And I, I just politely explain, oh, I'm the, I'm the resident and artist here. I'm just kind of modeling my masks and having fun. But it, it, it leads to some very interesting uh, interactions with people, as you could imagine. What inspired the general aesthetic? It seems like every time in those pictures, regardless of the mask, you're wearing that fur. And yeah, mask. yeah, awesome. yeah. So, so um, so I'm real into, it's a whole, I think I could do a whole other lecture on this, but I'm really into having them be characters, you know, almost I'm influenced by everything from, from like European Krampus festival stuff, um, old ancient festivals, but also like sci-fi type material. So I sort of like the natural backdrop in that my, to me, they're like characters without a story in that. You, you don't know, is this something from the future, the past, or, you know. So I think about them in that way. I actually did a writing contest where I just would have these images and not tell anything, tell anybody anything about them, and then say, come up with a story. Who is this? Is this Earth? Where are they? What time is this? You know, where are they coming from? And I, I've done some film work with costumes and stuff, so that, that's also influenced me uh, with music videos and film work. But I, I always kind of didn't want to just do work for other people. I wanted to make my own material and create my own characters. So, you know, and part of it is just the simple truth that like I come up with this mask and it just doesn't feel right to have normal clothes on. Like you want to bring something else to it, you know? So I bring in eccentric fabrics and netting and all these sort of, sort of outfit elements. I hope that answers your question. So this is the one that people are like, are you insane? Um, <laughs> And I get it, but I wasn't thinking about it in the moment. I was just had the adrenaline, and I was like, I'm going to get this picture. So, yes, I went up to, the to my neck in the swamp, and then uh, 
I got some flack for that one because I was the stupid part was I was by myself when I did that, so I had the tripod. Um, but you know, I'm alive, so I talk. I have all these park ranger contacts because I'm, I'm actually living with the park rangers um, at, at this park. And I said, I was like, you know, I didn't think about it too much, but that was pretty stupid. And they were like, well, it wasn't stupid to to because they lead heights. They lead hikes out into the the water that are up to your chest. But they said, you know, by yourself is not a good idea. So, and then and then later I read because I thought, oh, I don't see anything. I'm okay. And then I read that alligators can hold their breath underwater for 30 minutes. Oh. And I said, yeah, if I'd known that, uh, wouldn't have done that. So lesson learned, right? This is uh, Big Cypress's visitor center. Just another image of a meet and greet. I love to have. People tell me all the time they like the masks because it's art that you can touch and try on. And so many people go into museums and you get yelled at if you touch the art, right? So I try to make it interactive and things that people can connect with. A couple of park <laughs> rangers. It's always something different and fun for them. That's a Florida panther mask on the left. That's the Florida state animal and uh, highly, highly endangered. At one point, I think there was only about 20 of them in existence. And through preservation and through a lot of efforts, they've rebounded that population. But that, that species suffered greatly. And they do have bears down there as well, which is why you have the bear mask there. That's uh, our previous Reinhardt president owns the bear mask, so that's in her collection. Next we did, uh, the next one I did was Bandelier National Monument in New Mexico, which I had never, I try to pick places I've never been. Bandelier's uh, beautiful, it's about an hour from Santa Fe. It's in a deep canyon. And there's some really uh, fantastic landscapes there. There's the, the village. So if you're real lucky and you do an artist in residency in a national park, they put you in a historic building. That's not always the case. Sometimes you're just in the, the typical uh, park ranger housing. But for this one, I was, I was in their, their wonderful 100-year-old uh, you know, buildings. And a lot of interesting people living around me. I think there was some rotating artists that were coming in there. There's some of the, I like to show this because sometimes the photos don't do themselves justice, but with this particular photo, these are all, you can hike up into the eroding, it's called tuft, it's like a rock that erodes and creates these natural shapes, and you can hike up in them. Can you see the little orange speck? Yeah. That's a person. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so that, that's what you get with the West. You can get dramatic things that don't really do it justice till you see that one little person. I remember I had a similar Grand Canyon experience. I don't know that person. They just happened to wear orange, which worked great for my photo. Um, I donated that one to the park as well, so um, don't have that one anymore. But I love giving them to people who are connected with the parks because I know it's housed by somebody who's you know, connected to the, the place and, and uh, is going to take care of it. It's another one. So I started to bring, over the years, um, with this being the last residency I did, I started to bring in a lot of, of color. Um, my first masks I ever did were just black and white. I was like going to keep it real simple. I was also just teaching myself prop techniques at the same time, so I didn't need to overwhelm myself. But gradually I've gotten more and more colorful. The newest masks that I have are, I've literally brought flowers into them. So now it's flowers and paint and ribbons and kind of connecting to some of those, those uh, European things that I was talking about, festivals that have gotten me excited. Meet and greet. This is the Bandelier um, Visitor Center there. And one more that's me with my, one of my contacts. So yeah, I hope that uh, that's the last slide. I hope that you'll, you'll if you're a writer or you're uh, an artist in any way, you'll consider doing that. Um, there is an application process for each national park residency. It's usually, and they're all different. It's not it's at the same time, but um, it's it's almost always free, uh, free to apply for. And there's not a stipend attached, but there's a lot that um, that that comes with the, with it. And a lot of contacts that you get to make. And that's actually one of the reasons I wanted to show this for this, because this, this is tied with faculty development. Faculty development made all these trips possible. I could not have done it without it. So, Because it's, it's airplane, it's car rental, 
it's food, it's all these things. Sometimes a little bit provided by the parks, but it's mostly on the artist. So faculty development was a big part of that. Um, so thank you guys. Any questions? Anything? Yeah. It's probably because it's the, I guess the time frame for going is is different. But what's the general time frame for when you can go? Yeah. To these and be a resident an artist. Well, as you as a, most people in this room know, we're summer we're summer creatures for our lives, right? <laughs> so almost most of those are summertime, where we have those blocks of time. It's actually prevented me from doing a few that I really wanted. Like I I love. Arches National Park in Utah. The only residencies that times that they have are, it's when we have a school semester. So I can't, I've never been able to do it unless I can convince them to shift it. It's different for every park. Most of them though, because summer is a natural time to visit the parks, that's when, you know, that's when we'll do them. So um, yeah, and just, I meant to say this earlier with that first slide, if it'll take me back around, probably not. Um, if you just Google, Google National Park Artisan Residency, this big, that first image that I showed you, that's a, actually an interactive map. And you can click on those little dots, if I can get back to it. It's real easy to find, most people don't know about it. There we go. That's actually, I screen captured an interactive map. So you can click on those and it'll take you to the individual. And it's so fun, I mean, it gets your imagination going because you can just zoom around the map and, oh, I'd like to go to Juneau, Alaska. You know, that'd be great. What's the competition like for... for um... Yeah, it depends on the park. So for, for Grand Canyon, Yellowstone, they're going to get hundreds of applications. Um, I got more rejections in the beginning. And then um, as I got a couple park residencies under my belt, I think that helped me because I was able to uh, show, you know, I'm not going to get in your park and lose my mind. and because that I think you know it's some of them are a little bit more remote and that can be they're a little bit like can this person handle this I mean I've had I've had flat tires I've had like adventures so yeah so you got to kind of deal with that part of it and they're, they're looking for people that will be able to do that but most of the parks are so excited about bringing in different types of artists and I think that works to my advantage with the masks just being something different like they bring in musicians. I think at Petrified they had like a violinist that came out and performed for people. Always tons of writers. So you guys would be, would would really connect with that perfectly. They love writers. They don't make messes as much as <laughs> as uh, painters and, and sculptors. So yeah. Any any other questions? I don't want to talk over Donna's time too much. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, guys. <laughs> really appreciate it.